Ich bin so müde und durstig. Ich weiß, Liebchen. Aber du musst noch ein bisschen geduldig sein. Ja. Thank you, sir. Joseph Lenovsky. You're in the wrong place, sir. Go right down to the end of the hall to that office. It says Paul Furco on the door. Thank you, sir. Joseph Lenovsky. I have your passport, please. Sit down. What's your real name? My name is Joseph Lanovsky. I was born August 10th, 1925. My parents, Nicholas and Augusta Lanovsky. Their address was number 25 Spruce Street, Elmstead, New York, United States of America. In 1932, my parents returned to Czechoslovakia. I was seven. Of course, I went with them. Circumstances beyond my control prevented me from coming back before this. For example, for past nine years, I was in forced labor camp. You can check my passport and birth certificate very easily. I did. Lane Joseph. Born Lenovsky, Joseph, August 10th, 1925, Elmstead, New York. Left U.S. as minor, traveling with parents, Nicholas and Augusta Lenovsky, 1932. Destination, Czechoslovakia. Returned to U.S. 1950. Legal permission to change name to Lane Joseph, granted in 1955. Presently resides at 146 Alder Street, Elmstead, New York. You uh, picked an unfortunate identity, mister. What did you say your name was? Lanovsky. Joseph Lanovsky. You have 90 days in this country to prove that. You can come and go as you please. Just leave your address with us so we'll know where to find you. She's sewing, and I'll tell you if she's home. <laughs> Who is it, Ron? How do you yes. do? Mrs. Lane? Yes. Immigration and naturalization. <sighs> Please come in. Thank you. Is there anyone you know of who might have known your husband as a child? Father Bellici. He married us. He baptized Joe. Why is this important? Because Joe changed his name. Oh, I'm the one who got him to do that. I got into too many arguments with people who kept calling us Lenowski instead of Lenovsky. Well, we explained all that in court. It's just a matter of records, Mrs. Lane. Can you think of anyone else who knew your husband as a child? Aunt Anya. Anya Polna. Anya Polna. Can you... Oh. Hello, Joe. Anthony. Joe, uh, this is uh, Mr... Paul Firko. Oh, how do you do? He's from the immigration department. He's checking on you. But he won't tell me why. Would you sit down, please? Would you like something to drink, huh, Catherine? No, no, thank you. Well, what is there to check, Mr. Furco? I'm a citizen by birth. I was asking your wife if she knew anybody who knew you as a child. She mentioned Father Bellici and your aunt, Anya Polna. Oh, yes, that's right, yes. Um, but, uh, of course, she's not my real aunt. She was my mother's closest friend, and I called her aunt when I was a kid. I got into the habit. Can you give me her address? Joe, I think he should tell you why. Oh, Catherine, we have nothing to hide. Mr. Furco, if you want my Aunt Anya's address, you go downtown, you ask anybody for Aunt Anya's restaurant. She still does her own cooking, she bakes her own cakes. Matter of fact, when I was a kid, she used to let me lick the chocolate off the spoon. She's been there for 40 years. Can you think of anyone else who knew you as a child? Well, this is a small town. Anyone who was old enough and lived here then would knew my parents and knew me. There must be a lot of people like that. 
I must say that I am curious. I'd be interested to know what this is all about. After all, if you leave without saying anything, I'll be lying awake all night, raking up every sin I may be ever committed. I wouldn't lose any sleep, Mr. Lane. Just a little red tape. The file is pending. There are a couple of details that have to be cleared up before I can close it. Thank you for your courtesy. Thank you, Mrs. Lane. Goodbye. 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 Does that make sense to you? I don't know. Why should a file be pending after 10 years? You're convinced. Father, but just think about this. The boy was seven when he left the country. Nobody here saw him till he came back. He was 25 then. He said his name was Joseph Lenovsky. What was his proof? He knew the name of his father and mother, the date and place of his birth. Father, that's not difficult information to get. He could have gotten it in a hundred ways. But he couldn't get his mother's eyes in a hundred ways. I found no difficulty in accepting him, Mr. Fertile, from the moment I saw him. Do you know a woman named Anya Polna? Very well. If you want to take the time to talk to her, she'll probably tell you the same story I have. Mr. Farquhar, Joe Lane is a good man. I can vouch for him. That's not the question in my mind, Father. It's my opinion that the boy I knew as Joseph Lenoski grew up to be the man we now call Joseph Lane. They are one and the same. Beyond all doubt. Yours or mine? Father, I'd appreciate it if you'd keep this visit confidential. There are people who wake up in the middle of the night and have to get out of bed because the pictures are hanging crooked on the wall. They have to straighten them out or they can't sleep. I have to get this straightened out. If you're an American citizen, then you belong in this country. If you're not, then we'll deport you. If you're a citizen, then it can be proved. How? You tell me how. You have to help me to help you. I can't think of any way. I can't think of any way out of this trap. Somebody steal my identity? Sit there laughing at me. He's inside my identity. How can I get back in? That's what you tell me. That may or may not be true. I'm an American citizen. You prove it for me. It's not engraved on your forehead. No, no. No. You have a problem. You wake up in the middle of the night because the pictures are hanging crooked on the wall. That is not my problem. You don't have a wall of your own in a barracks in a forced labor camp. That is my world. My world walls are blank. Something to look through to a dream. You try not to sleep in forced labor camp. When you sleep, Nightmares come. Your stomach gnaws at you. Holes in your teeth, bottomless pain. You scream. Everybody screams. But it's like den of lions at feeding time. So, you try not to sleep in, in barracks. Because when you are awake, you control everything. When you are asleep, fear comes back, holds hands with pain. You wake up tired. You get tired enough, you die. So you try to stay awake because you need rest. You learn the trick of sleeping, waking up, looking through the blank walls to a fine dream. My dream was to come home again. There it is, down there. Home. I'm back home again. You think I haven't tried to find some way to prove to you who I am? There is no proof. Do you understand? I have to send you back and I'm not sure. And still I have to send you back. All I ask you to do is remember. Anything. Think back over your life as a child. Think back over the details. Give me information and I'll check it. When I was five years old, 
I sat and licked the chocolate off a spoon my Aunt Anya gave me. There, is that enough of a detail for you? Can you now construct my whole past life from that? Can you? Anya? Anya who? Anya Polna, my mother's best friend. Who told you that? You, you, you prove a theory I have. All policemen are neurotic. Out of all the details of your life, why did you pick just that one just at this moment? Okay. We'll check it. We'll check it tomorrow. The golden age of television will continue in a moment. Just off Route 19 in St. Petersburg is a place where you can learn to ski the Alps and shoot the rapids all in the same building. Excuse me, I, I would like to talk to Mr. Who is it, Joe? Uh, Catherine, uh, a man ran out of uh, gas. He wants to use the phone. <laughs> No. No, I got time. After ten years, I got time. We thought you were dead. I mourn for you with all my heart. Oh, listen. You don't know how we trusted you? We stood at the railway track, waiting for you to bring back the dynamite. Hmm? We stood there. Police came. I said, you must be dead. What other excuse could there be for you not coming no, back? No, no, it wasn't that way. You were running for the No, border. no, I didn't run away. You have no right to be alive. No, 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 no. Joe! This is your wife. Does she know you? Does she know who you are? Do you know this man? You married him. You have children with him. Do you know what their father is? Leave her alone. She's not from here. She's... She doesn't know how I was on the other side. Leave her out of this! Did you tell her you were a murderer? Huh? Catherine, go upstairs. Did you tell her you killed six men? Six decent men who loved and trusted you? Did you tell her? Tell her? Catherine, please, go upstairs. Let me talk to him alone. Did he tell you he's dirt? He tell you he's a coward? Ask me, I know. Out of eight men, two are alive. Me and my living cousin who ran away. Oh, everything is all mixed up. I tell you, you don't know. Yeah. I'm going to call a police. First, I ask your husband before I do that. No, yeah, yeah, put, put it down. Put it down. Let me talk to you, please. Let me tell you what happened. I know what happened. You're a fact, Mr. Lane, Mr. Lanovsky. People in prison are skinny. You have family? No families in forced labor camps. I built myself. A life for myself. What is a there life? anything wrong with that? What a life! Mr. Lane, Lanovsky, I'll tell you something. He stole this life. He's going to pay it back. He stole it, the house, the money, the family, and the good name from the dead. Don't worry, he'll pay it back. Let me talk to you, don't please. Don't worry, my loving cousin. You're going to pay it back with interest. Identifying marks, birthmarks, scars, anything like that? I don't know. Hello? We'll, uh, find him and pick him up. Uh, why does it have to be this way? We were closer than brothers. It's an impersonal thing. Joe, it's Father Belici. Good morning, Father. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, I'll be right there. But, Father, is it necessary for Catherine to be there? After all, she has nothing to do with it. Oh, all right. I'll, I'll be right down. He wouldn't tell me what it was about. My cousin is with him. He wants you and me to talk with him. Morning, Father. Joe, he's told me everything. He's been here all night talking to me, pouring his soul out to me. Father. What should I do? There's a great deal of bitterness between you and that man. 
You have to talk to each other. But, Father, must Catherine be there? Must she be dragged through this whole thing? She's your wife, Joe. He's in my study, waiting for you. I want you to tell her. Tell her what I want. He wants his name back. Don't you understand, Mrs. Prolick? My name is Joseph Lanowski. Your husband stole my name. Your husband's name is Henry Prolick. Joseph, I want you to believe something. I never betrayed you. Joseph, you know where these scars came from? I was picked up by the secret police on my way there that night. I was chained to a wall in Ruzine prison for one year. I thought you were dead, Joseph. When I got away, I took your name. I want my name back. I can't give it to you. Then I'll take it back. Joseph, I'll give you anything you want, but not the name. I've got $2,000 in the bank. Take it. Take it. It's yours. I'll get more. Whatever you want. You'll always have money, I promise. $2,000 for a simple name like Lanovsky. I'm not selling it. I've got a wife, two children. This is my country. Joseph, I've built a whole life for myself here. Ten years of life. You say I stole your name. I didn't know. Now you know. You want to steal ten years of my life. What are you doing? Are you punishing me, Joseph? For what? Don't make me feel sorry for you. It's the only chance I have. It's your pity. It's true that there's my wife. You tell her. Tell her you want to send me back. Don't tell me. And tell my kids. You go down to the house, look them in the face, and you tell them that you want to send me back. Go ahead. Just because you got here before I did, you want me to give up the chance to live decently? Why? You tell me why. Joseph, what were we fighting for? What did we say was the difference between us and them? It was respect for each separate human being. Huh, Joseph? There's more than one human being here. I'm human being too. Why should I go back? You say you spent a year in Rosen prison? I spent how many years in forced labor camp? Why should I give up chance to live decently? I stand there on boat. I look at the Statue of Liberty. My heart jumps. At last, at last! Now you want me to stand on boat? Turn my back to my own country? Why? You tell me why? I can't tell you why. I can only ask you. I can only say. of you for putting me in this position. I give you the name. You have no right to ask. Catherine, I'm not, I'm not thinking about myself. What do I care where I live? I'm thinking about you and the kids. What do you want me to do? I, I can't. I won't be torn apart from you and the kids. If that's all, Joe, then it's easy. I go with you. The children, they go where we go. I don't care where we live as long as we're together.
Joe. Joe, we can't do it. Joseph, I love this country. I've lived here for 10 years. I've made many friends. I've been an honest man. That must add up to something. So, what am I scared of? I have to have faith. I can't take your name. Everything turns to ashes if the whole thing is a lie. All right, Lenovsky. Mr. Ferko, I have to tell you something. I am not Joseph Lenovsky. My name is Henry Prolick. I'll be able to sleep tonight. Pictures are hanging straight on the wall again. Join us at the same time next week when the Golden Age of Television presents Medals for Harry. Signature. It's as unique as the person who writes it. Spend a fascinating half hour with host Greg Jackson and tennis champion Billie Jean King next. <laughs>